All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Ruben Gonzalez, who is returning again to Sales Pop and is in Colorado Springs. How are you doing, Ruben? Doing great. How are you, John? It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, you too. And Ruben, in case you uh, you haven't come across him before, is a an Olympic winter Olympic athlete. Uh, Ruben, if you just give two seconds on your on your Olympic uh, on your Olympic pursuits. Sure, I'm a, I'm an unlikely Olympian. Uh, I got a lot of heart, but no body. Uh, always the last kid picked for PE. When I was 21, I uh, I decided I wanted to go to the Winter Olympics. I lived in Houston. I took up the luge. I went to Lake Placid, New York, and uh, four years and a few broken bones later, I made it. And I got I, to date, I've gotten to go to four Winter Olympics, each in a different decade. Uh, the last one was Vancouver at 47 years old. Everybody thought I was a coach. And so <laughs> I, I, I speak all over the world, uh, basically inspiring, motivating, teaching people how to be mentally tough, right, uh, to get yeah. through tough times. Or how to be just mental enough to uh, climb on a luge, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I white knuckled it for 25 years. I hated it, but it was my ticket to the Olympics. So I kept at it. And finally, I learned how to get over the fear. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that later, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, speaking of uh, speaking of challenges, obviously, the last year has been very challenging and particularly challenging to people such as yourself uh, who have businesses based on on speaking and consulting and uh, and and so, when when the co when COVID hit you, how how did you manage to pivot your business or what did you do? What was what was your first reaction to it? <laughs> Mid March, uh, started getting all these cancellations. Uh, I'm I'm a keynoter, so I open and close mm -hmm. events and. And so there's people weren't meeting, right? And so uh, I was deer in the headlights for about two, three days. And I told my wife, don't buy anything <laughs> because I don't know what's going on here. And then after three days, I remember something John Watson, uh, former um, um, uh, CEO of IBM had said, he said, you know, if you want to double your business, double your failure rate, right? Take more chances, throw mud on the wall. And so I called a couple of buddies of mine uh, who are also speakers, and I told them, look, we need to figure out this virtual world. Uh, we need to uh, let's all three of us make every mistake in the book as quickly as we can. And we'll Zoom each other every couple of days, you know, share best practices. We'll figure out that 80 percent of the stuff doesn't work and we'll discover the 20 percent that does. And so within a few weeks, we, we, we figured it out. Right. And we figured out that. Uh, Things like uh, engagement is much more important in virtual, right? You got to keep because there's the people have too many distractions. They have kids running around. And so you better be engaging. So you, so we, uh, you, you have to do it differently, right? And, um, and just we, we made a decision that, hey, let's, let's make some mistakes and we'll learn from our mistakes instead of uh, being mm -hmm. that deer in the headlights that I was for three days. Yeah, and uh, and so I mean, so obviously, quickly you learned some lessons about being able to do things virtually. What were some of the what were some of the surprises you had, or things that you weren't expecting? Well, once or one one objection that I would get, and and I still get all the time, is oh, our people are zoomed out. Well, well, mm -hmm. they're uh, it's they're not really zoomed out. They're they're sick and tired of bad Zoom, right? Unprofessional, boring Zoom. Because when you think about it. They go home, what do they do? They turn on the TV, right? Mm -hmm. For professional virtual entertainment, right? <laughs> and so we have to educate people. And um, and where before I might do a, a, a one hour keynote, for example, and maybe a little Q and A at the end, live, right? Well, on Zoom uh, or, or whatever pro, you know, um, yeah. platform they're using, I tell them, look, uh, we can do whatever you like, right? You're the boss, but this is what's working. Let me, let's do 30 minutes, all right? Where I'll tell my story and I'll tailor it to whatever your needs are. And then you interview me for 15 minutes. Now it's kind of like the Tonight Show, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a little more engaging. And and I provide questions, but I tell them, you know, these are optional, right? You ask me whatever yeah. you want. And then the last 15, 20 minutes, let's open it up for everybody. Now it's interactive, right? Now everybody's, and then it gets really fun because you never know what they're going to ask. 
And I tell them, if, if it works for you, let's keep it open-ended, right? I'll ask questions all day. I'll answer questions all day long. I'm, I'm here for your people, right? Let's, let's, let's help them out. And, and, and they're amazed afterwards. They say, man, that was really cool. You know, they were actually paying attention. Nobody turned off. Yeah, because I mean, I think part of it is that people have set such low expectations of, of Zoom and things like Zoom and, you know, virtual meeting spaces, etc. Because they never really, you know, they use them as, yeah, as a convenience or whatever, but they never looked at the at the power they have. And what you have just outlined there is rather than just looking at it as this is all I can do right now, you take it and say, OK, if this is what I'm doing right now, how can I use it to do it the best it can be, but also Maybe this is going to be something that some people prefer in the future. I that excites me because where before your typical uh, corporation might have a big uh, sales kickoff, an annual one, right in January, mm -hmm. bring everybody into Las Vegas or wherever. But yeah. now, hey, why don't we do a quarterly one? We give them a vitamin, you know, vitamin B twelve shot every quarter, like this, where they don't even have to leave work, and yeah. it's a great investment. So I, I'm. I am a, firm, a big believer that after this is over, this is going to grow our business. Here's another thing I can do. Let me show you. <laughs> I can do show and tell. See, I can I can talk to people. And I can show them my sled, and wow. I can show them. I'm telling the story about how yeah. Sports Illustrated sent me this picture, and and it inspired me, and I and it kept me going. And I can I, I can I can't do that from stage. See, and so I I show that to the you know. Let's say I'm on the short list of a you know, three, three people are considering, I'll, I'll do some of this stuff. I'll tell them, look, books are important. Okay. I don't just say I, uh, you ought to read books. I read them, right. I actually, you know, practice what I preach. And so, uh, and, and I do it with this excitement so that they see that, uh, oh, it doesn't have to be boring. It can be, you know, yeah, no, and, and I love, I love that you point out your sled because I, every time I see that sled, I just think of, are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's all you have when you're hurtling down that uh, that icy yeah, yeah. tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> a little spandex suit. Yeah, we yeah, in, in, about, yeah in a little span. Well, yeah, I guess you have a helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, helmet. Yeah, we're, we're there to protect the helmet, keep it from getting too scratched up in case of a crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but see, it's all a mindset, right? I um a couple of months ago, I did a a, a presentation for a it was a Long Island school district and it was all their teachers because teachers are going uh, education is getting hit really hard a lot of teachers are quitting education because it's, they're finding it hard to pivot mm -hmm. and so i spoke for them and and afterwards the the, the uh, superintendent was all gun ho all excited i said hey you know, you're so excited can you just tell me what you think i did for your people and don't tell me now just stew on it for a couple of days mm -hmm. right because i really want to know what you know what do i do for people and he came back with, uh, you helped us, uh, you inspired us to focus on the uh, opportunities instead of the challenges. We've gotten used to, to focusing on the challenges and, and, and you kind of changed that mindset for us. Uh, awesome, thank you, you know? And so um, I went right to my website, started putting that all over the website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen to your clients, right? And, uh, <laughs> and, and play yeah. off of that. No, uh, absolutely. And that's what I think. That's what I think is if you go with the right mindset, as you just said, and embrace it, you can do great things. I think, unfortunately, what a lot of people did is or are still doing to some degree is sort of looking at it as, oh, this has been forced upon me. I can't wait till things go back to the way they were and I can get away from this instead of going, you know, if there's one thing that this that this pandemic has taught us, and that is that the future is precarious at the best of times. So rather than, um, you know, pine for the good old days, you're better off embracing and making what you what you have in front of you today, using it to the best of your ability. Yeah, I um, about a month ago, I posted a question on Facebook. I asked, uh, what's what's your biggest challenge or what's what's holding you? What's keeping you from reaching your goals? And some lady wrote uh, the the uh, the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, something in me. I just started typing right away, and I said, "What if? Hey, what if this is going to be a ten-year pandemic? Okay, yeah. let's just pretend. But prepare for the worst, hope for the best, right? Hopefully, it's over tomorrow. But what if it's ten years? 
So how would you change your business? How would you change? Would you still be in the same industry, right? Um, how would you thrive? How would you pass the competition? Because whenever there's a, a challenge, a tough time, that's the time when you can pass the competition because a lot of them are scared right now. And so um, uh, she didn't respond. A lot of other people did. I said, hey, that I hadn't thought about it that way. <laughs> I guess yeah. I better figure something out. <laughs> yeah, you can't just yeah. wait. Yeah, exactly. You can't just wait, wait it out. Because to be honest, if you, if you waited it out, um, you know, back a year ago, back in March of last year, we would have, you know, we were all thinking, okay, is this four weeks? Is it six weeks? You know, how long is this isn't going to go on very long. So if we were waiting it out, you're already six weeks behind the uh, behind the eight ball. But anyway, um, and I think the, the other part, um, Ruben, I think what uh, what you have proven is the fact that you can you can come through the screen, right? The screen doesn't have to be a barrier. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, you know? And it opens up opportunities. I mean, uh, let's see, five years ago, I spoke in Poland. I took the whole fa family to Poland. We had a great time and, and uh, I've been wanting to go back. And now there's someone over there that I met that's starting to open up the Polish market because we can do it virtually, right? And I've mm -hmm. got somebody else in India that's doing the same thing. And so with, with, with virtual, you could be speaking in South America in the morning, Europe in the afternoon, and Asia in the evening. You can't do that even with, with, with your own Concord, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm excited. I, I really, and it's not false, okay? It's, it is tough, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not making as much as I was, you know, a year ago, right? Because virtual doesn't pay as much, mm -hmm. but... It's, I tell you, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I'm, I'm going to figure this puppy up next level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say to, uh, what would you say to people who are maybe struggling a little bit and who haven't been able to figure out what to do next? What would you, uh, what would you say to them in terms of like approaching this problem? You know, I, I'll give you two analogies. One of them is, uh, I did the luge for 25 years. I was scared to death. White knuckled it, hated it. I did it in spite of that because I wanted to be in the Olympics, right? That's how badly I wanted it. When I was training for Vancouver, my fourth one, this coach, he asked me, what's going on in your head, man? I mean, I can't believe you're still scared after so long. And I told him, man, as, as I see those walls going faster and faster, I get tighter and tighter. I'm surprised I can even steer in the bottom half of the curve of the track because I'm so, I'm, I'm hard like a brock. And he said, luge is not about speed, okay? It's about who has the best time. You need to stop focusing on the walls because those are just making you scared. And you just need to start focusing on what do I need to do in every section of every curve to ensure I get the best time. This is about, about the best time. And that night I did about a hundred mind runs, visualization runs like this, like a horse, right? No, mm -hmm. no looking at the walls. Next day, my next run, zero fear. The fear didn't diminish. It disappeared right uh changing the focus changed the whole the whole experience okay i remember reading i, I like reading books about uh, uh car car racers and uh, race right. car drivers I, I remember in high school i read one about mario andretti and he talked about how when you're racing rally you know out in the dirt roads and you feel that the cars you know it's it's going off the road all right you don't look at the light post. You look at the space in between because whatever you're looking at, that's where you're going, right? And so successful people focus on what they want, okay? They think about, they talk about, they focus on what they want. And unsuccessful people, they focus on what they don't want, okay? So mm -hmm. I would say just, man, what do you want? You know, what, what's your best case scenario? What's your goal? Focus on that and surround yourself with like-minded people that are, that are positive like you right people that, that you know accountable keep you accountable to doing the things you need to do <laughs> you can't wait yeah. don't wait exactly and what i love about this story and actually to be honest i've used it a couple of times i've referenced your story about the you know focusing on the bends first uh, or the, the the curves um is that it's saying okay stop stop focusing you know you know you want to get to the finish line okay and you know where the finish line is and all of that good stuff but now you focus uh, each step of the way you focus on the step and not the finish right one step in front yeah. of the other 
Yeah, and so the business, uh, the, the the business uh, way is okay. What do I need to do in the next fifteen minutes? Who do I need to call? Mm -hmm. Who do I need to follow up with? Maybe they're not buying right now, but you can still work on that relationship, okay? So that when they start buying, you're top of mind and you're number one, okay? Now is when you're winning tomorrow's battles, but you got to do the work now. This morning I was, uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Bomb Bomb. Uh, it's just a, it's a company yeah. here in Colorado Springs. It's like uh -huh. video, you okay? Mm -hmm. So. I'm, I'm going through, I'm on the bees right now. I just started this morning. I, I, a friend of mine sent me a bomb bomb uh, uh, email and it reminded me about these guys. So I, I subscribed. I'm just sending like 30, 40 second uh, uh, little videos to everybody that's ever booked me in the past. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll bring me back. So, hey, I got another program. It's virtual. It's a lot of fun. It helps people, you know, focus on opportunity instead of challenges. And, uh, we'll see, right? Time will tell. But it's another way of of, um, of of touching people. And maybe instead of ten percent opens on 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 emails, I'm at fifteen percent, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so everything counts. Every yeah. little thing counts uh, over the long run. Focus on the long term, right? That's another thing. Mm -hmm. The longer term your focus, right? Um, the the better your decision making is today. Right. If you focus on the short term, then you're just, you know, uh, you know, no delay gratification. You want to focus on, you know, on what do I want? Right. That picture over there. I want to walk over back to that picture. Again. Sure. It illustrates it. OK. I don't even know. We talked about this before. But when I no. when I decided I wanted to do a luge, I lived in Houston, Texas. I didn't even know where the track was. I wrote uh, Sports Illustrated a letter and they sent me that picture and I put it on the frame right in front of my bed in my bedroom, first person I saw was him. He reminded me, I woke up in the morning. I, oh yeah, I'm going for the Olympics. Gotta eat, right, gotta uh, work out, gotta hang around winners, read good books, right? And so he was my goal, goal uh, uh, setting you know, reminder. At night, mm -hmm. before I shut off the lights, last person I saw was him. So all night I'm dreaming about the Olympics. I'm not thinking about it's gonna, how those bones are gonna hurt when they crash. No, I'm thinking about how great it's gonna be when I walk into that opening ceremony. And so get in, keep your goals in front of you so you don't forget because otherwise life happens, right? And six yeah, months yeah. go by, a year goes by and you totally forgot about your dream, your goal. And so that's long-term thinking. Part, yeah, and the other thing you touched on there is, you know, surround yourself with other people who are trying to get ahead and who are positive and all of that, because let's face it, you can find plenty of people to talk about how terrible things are with COVID and with the shutdowns and all of that kind of stuff. But you need to surround yourself with people who are figuring out ways to actually excel and, and, and optimize this situation. Yeah, I think this is the third time we're doing this. And yeah. I, I'm excited, you know, because uh, uh, you're, you're my kind of people, right? <laughs> we, you get it. I get it. You know, we're the same kind of person. And so it's it's a very important success principle. Who are you going to hang around with? And um, because you become, you pick up their habits, right? You pick yeah. up their habits. And so you you want to make sure it's people that have those habits that are, you know, people are already doing what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, and this is, and, and if there's one byproduct of all of this, it's been a great time to, for you to reevaluate uh, who you're surrounding yourself with, what inputs you're allowing into your mind, all of that stuff. Because if you can reduce some of the noise, if you can make sure that you surround yourself with the, with the right kind of people, um, then opportunities start to unfold. Yeah. And you, uh, it's funny. I'll tell a story. The, our preacher, um, I, I just met him. We started going to a new church and he'd been the preacher there for 25 years. And we really liked it because it was close by and, and we just liked his style. And we've been going there for about three months. Last week, he hit us with a bomb that he's, uh, he's getting out of the preaching business, you know, just prayed on it. And I thought, darn, just as we found a one that we liked. Turns out this guy's an MBA. He, he taught MBA courses in college for 15 years. He's a consultant. Long story short, he came over. We spent two hours talking business and ideas mm -hmm. and iron sharpens iron and uh, how can we collaborate and and uh, and figure out ways to to uh, you know to move forward right and he he told me about two people that might be willing to make some phone calls for me to you know uh, to inside sales type stuff so how cool is that so this something that 
totally bad, right? That he's not going to mm-hmm. be our, our preacher anymore. Turn it, uh, turn it to something good. I might have found myself a couple of salespeople. <laughs> so. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But it's all about being open. Um, well, listen, um, Ruben, as usual, this has been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. Glad to see that, uh, you know, you've taken this opportunity to meet the challenge head on, which is the only way you know how to obviously being a luge. Being a luge. What do you call somebody who does luge? Is there a name? Uh, we call ourselves sliders, which, but I, I thought it was, that always sounded kind of lame. But uh, yeah. yeah, losers, uh, unfortunately. Loser. Losers, no, losers sounds too much like losers. So that's oh, I know, losers. I know. Why, why did they have to call it that? La luge in French means the sled. Yeah. So we're uh, stuck with that. Anyways. Well, maybe you could be les luges or something. Les luges, yeah, yes. That's <laughs> wear a little, a little beret, you know, look get cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um, all of Ruben's information will be available under the video. But before we go, Ruben, please do tell people about uh, who you are and what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ruben Gonzalez, four-time Olympian. I speak all over the world, especially now. <laughs> and um, uh, my uh, best place to reach me uh, today would be Ruben U, R-U-B-E-N-U. All right. Uh, I got my own university.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's some cool stuff there, some free stuff too. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, something that might help you move forward faster towards those goals. Perfect. All right, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.